GM, one of the largest vehicle manufacturers in the world, with operations in six continents and over 164,000 employees. GM has sold 7.7 .7 million vehicles in 2019. The automaker that was founded in 1908 has built more than 500 million vehicles since then. But in 2008, GM was about to lose everything. So, how exactly did they manage to get out of it? In today's episode, we will discuss how GM got a fresh start in 2009. 20th century was an incredible time for automobiles. There were 4,000 cars in the US, most of them either steam or electric. This is when a high school dropout, a cigar salesman, founded a carriage company. He transformed the company from a $2,000 startup into a $2 million empire. The company eventually became the largest horse-drawn vehicle manufacturer in the US. But the public did not like riding in horse carriages, as they were loud and smelled like burned gas. To come up with a new system, William bought various companies such as Buick and went in a 15-year partnership with McLaughlin Motor Car Company Limited. William's plan was more than just expanding Buick brand. He wanted to create the largest automotive company. He ended up buying companies like Oldsmobile, Cadillac, Pontiac. The cash was running out as he was buying company after company. This buying streak had to stop, and the company started to focus on improving their product. They developed state-of-the-art driving machines, and by 1931, GM became the world's largest manufacturer of motor vehicles, making 44% of all the cars in the US. After World War II, the company resumed manufacturing of civilian vehicles. GM was going strong. They helped develop the guidance and navigation system for Apollo 11. In 2000, GM became the sole owner of Saab. But then, things started to decline for GM. In 2005, GM announced that they have lost $10.6 billion. In 2007, GM lost $38 billion. Losing billions year after year was a hard hit. Their sales dropped 45%. GM was running out of cash. Seeing that the automotive industry was in trouble, in December 2008, President Bush announced an emergency financial rescue plan to aid the big three automakers. The plan approved a $13.4 billion in government loans from TARP. The loans would allow auto companies to continue operating until March 2009 by which time the plan required them to demonstrate financial viability or return the money within 30 days. GM was in trouble. On February 2009, they announced that their cash reserves were down to $14 billion. GM lost $30.9 billion. Rick Wagoner met with the newly elected President Obama's auto task force and told them that the company could not survive much longer without additional government loans. On March 30, 2009, President Barack Obama declined to provide financial aid to GM and requested that GM produce credible plans for the coming years. Because of no money, Chapter 11 bankruptcy appeared the most promising way to reduce its debts. But declaring bankruptcy to reduce debts without any plan would mean losing consumer confidence. Rick told one of the lawyers that, filing bankruptcy may be inevitable, so GM went to work. GM had to come up with a plan that would show that they can generate profits if they were to get funding from the government. Their plan was to split the company into two companies. New Corporation, a new company with a clean balance sheet taking on GM's best brands, and Old Corporation, the leftover liabilities of GM. The plan was to be made and finalized by the team before filing for bankruptcy. If the company did not show any plans of reorganization, they would have to declare Chapter 7 bankruptcy, where courts will shut GM down for good, selling their assets to pay creditors. For GM, time was running out. The team at GM worked 18-hour days going through assets that could be transferred under new company, leaving the rest under old company. The pressure was high. As the days went by, cash was running out. GM was two weeks away from having nothing in their bank accounts. Under new company, old company plan, the company decided that Hummer, Saturn, Saab, and Pontiac were more of liabilities, whereas Chevrolet, Cadillac, GMC, and Buick were their best brands. It was agreed to fully fund new company with equity, and thus it became the chosen path to save GM.
On June 1, 2009, GM filed for bankruptcy in New York. With $82 billion in assets and $173 billion in liabilities. It was the largest industrial bankruptcy in history, where the court asked what GM's plan was for revival. They presented new company plan. With thousands of individuals depending on the survival of the company, GM finally got a fresh start in 2009, and the industry was saved with government funding of about $50 billion. In November 2010, GM returned to the stock market with an IPO of $20.1 billion. The following year, GM regained its title as the largest automaker in the world. So, what can we learn from their experience? Well, it's pretty simple. If you have more than one thing that you are working on, continue to work on the one that are showing results and disregard the ones that are not. Until next time, have a good one.